Welcome back to Bachelor Tea Party. I'm Lauren Herbert filling in for Zuri Hall, who is off this week, but no worries. She will be back next week. But of course, today we're still joined by our favorite, Ashley Iconetti Haven, Hi. as well as Blake Hortzman. Yes, Guys, hello. welcome. Hi. Hi. Uh, Thanks for having me. I'm Thanks so excited to on. have both of you. Ashley, of course, we have you every week and we just love you so much. And Blake, we're ready for you to give us all the tea, okay? All right, good, so, good. But before we get into last night's episode, the cast of Bachelor in Paradise was announced last week. There, of course, are some familiar faces that are going to go down to the beach, including Abigail, Victoria, Natasha Parker, and grocery store Joe. So guys, who are you looking forward to seeing, to finding love in paradise, in the beach, or causing drama? Who are you guys looking forward to seeing? The storyline I'm going to be most invested in is Joe, because, you know, I'm friends with him, and... Yeah, that's really it. He's like my only like real friend in paradise uh, as far as the list goes. So yeah, I think uh, for me, I want to, I think Abigail, I want to see Abigail find love. She seems like the sweetest human, so genuine and stuff. So I want to see her find love. And then I'm interested to see Queen Victoria down there and what her, uh, I don't know what her like attitude and personality is going to be down there. We know what it was like on The Bachelorette or on The Bachelor. So we'll see what it's like in paradise. Yeah, I know. I was about to say she has this bold new look. She's rocking some blonde hair. Mm. She kind of looks different. I don't know. But, you know, are we going to see her being the villain that we did see on that James season? Or is she going to have a new leaf about her? Is she going to learn from her mistakes from last season? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. We'll see. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. Ashley, you just said like you're interested in seeing Joe. Who do you think he's going to connect with? I don't know. Mm. I don't know. Blake, do you have any ideas? Uh, what if Kendall comes down there and they reunite oh, and they have oh the whole God, thing? You never know. You never know. How could we not talk about that? You never there know. are definitely rumors that Kendall might be there. And I feel like that would be so dramatic. I feel like not to like stroke my ego, but like a storyline similar to Jared and mine, because mm. like you have a couple that comes in with history. Uh, and then you're locked in the same place and there are different people and it's so heartbreaking. So like, yeah, yeah. that would be something to see. It needs to be quite the storyline for sure. Yeah. If she comes down. Yeah. So yeah, I we'll feel see. like I can see it. And Blake, I know a lot of people thought you were going to go back to paradise, but you obviously didn't. No, no, I didn't. You know, there were some conversations had, I went through some testing and everything. And at the end of the day, I wasn't sure if they were actually going to be like hit, hit me up, but I about a couple days before I hit them and I was like, you know, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Take me off the list. Uh, I got close. I got close. Actually, if you would have told me two years ago that I even considered going back to paradise, you know, I would have told myself I'm an idiot, you know? Um, but it just wasn't for me. That environment is just, it's just not for me, you know? And I, I don't think I'd be able to be myself. You know, I have my trust issues down there are quite large. So uh, it would be pretty hard for me to go down there. So, and I felt very at peace with the decision. I felt very at peace with the decision. So I feel good about it. Okay, good to hear. Well, then we'll just have to wait to see what goes down at the beach because, you know, it will be dramatic. We can all expect that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Totally. All right. So, guys, we're going to go into last night's episode. So, first things first, Katie started off the night with a one on one with Justin. How do we feel about their connection? I don't feel the connection is that strong. And I hated the fact there was a wedding date. Right. We all know that I can't stand wedding dates, but this one particularly annoyed me because there was no humor to it. It wasn't like rolling around in the mud and wedding dresses or some sort of like competition. They like did a full blown ceremony. They, she walked down the aisle, they exchanged vows, they kissed. It was just wrong to take that sacred moment away from someone. I would have refused the date. I legitimately would have told the producers, I'm not doing this. I'm not mm. mocking my wedding. Mm -hmm. I, I, she, I, she legit walked down the aisle. And those vows were intense. Yeah. Like they weren't like funny, fun yeah. vows. Like they were real, like intense vows. I agree. I hate these wedding dates. I don't know why they do them every season. Um, but this one in particular felt a little more cringy than most just because it was so real. The wedding pictures afterwards. And I was just like, oh my God, it was hard to watch. It was hard to watch. I like Justin though. He seems like a nice guy, but I agree. I don't see the chem chemistry as much. Like I, I, I was shocked he got the rose. I didn't if think he was, was the oh, same. The fact yeah. that he got the rose over Connor, if you would have told us that a couple weeks ago, we would have been astonished. Yep. Also crazy that the wedding date was with somebody with like Justin, who was not a front runner. Like we saw with Zach and Tasha, 
when they did the wedding date, which was more of a wedding photo shoot, not like the whole ceremony, there was at least like something there, like really heavy that you were like, okay, these two are really picturing their wedding together. And it felt more appropriate than this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I forgot Zach and Tasha had that date. That's right. Because then Katie goes into telling Justin, you know, look, my dad died. I learned that he was actually not my real dad. And now I have my biological dad that I'm trying to make a relationship. So it was this intimate moment. But like you guys said, it wasn't the right guy to mm -hmm. say that to. No, I yeah. mean, you could have told him the story. I just don't think that they needed that date in order for the story to come out. See, I, so I agree. I don't think they they did, but I think they felt they did. Like, I think that's why they actually had her walk down the aisle so that then at the night portion, she could talk about how she doesn't have a dad right now to walk her down the aisle. So I think they tried to like, yeah, build it up or like create that storyline. But I agree. I think that could have just been a conversation had, you know, anytime. So, but I mean, that is interesting because I, we, I didn't know that about Katie. So we got yeah. to know Katie a little bit more, you know, and then mm -hmm. that date. So that was nice. Um, yeah, I agree. I, I, I like Justin, but I don't see him going much further, I don't think. I don't either. But what about Connor? Were you guys surprised? I was surprised. I, especially, you know, the first couple of episodes, I was like, definitely he's the top four. But he was sent home. What did you guys think? I thought he was top four for a while, but over the past couple of weeks, he's definitely been slipping on my list. So I wasn't completely surprised. Um, I was really like sad for him that she admitted that it was the kiss thing because I think that's like so offensive. <laughs> but like, I know she was being honest, and like, it wasn't that he was a bad kisser, it's just there wasn't like a spark in the kiss. But still, like, that is gonna haunt him for a while. Totally. So, I, I agree at the beginning, like, yeah, they, I mean that like first two or three episodes, they were like making out all the time. There was physical chemistry. Yeah, so I don't know what happened. Obviously there's a lot we don't see. So I don't know what happened between then and now. Um, but yeah, Connor, he's, he's like a golden retriever. Like he seems like such a nice guy. And like, it was hard to see him get dumped, you know? And Katie was struggling with it. She clearly felt, I mean, incredibly bad and liked him as a person, just wasn't her person. I think. It's always the hardest dumpings when mm -hmm. the person just seems to like have all the checks, but they don't have that magic. Yep. check box mm -hmm. so yeah, feel yeah bad. he didn't do anything wrong you know like he did nothing wrong it just yeah, yeah something something was missing it was clearly emotional for her and then also for the guys i like yeah. i thought it was so cute like and that. pure when the guys were like super sad about it i'm like this this tells that connor's a good guy yeah agreed yeah. i uh trey was like Balling. balling he was so emotional i was like he cares more about connor than he does katie for sure like he said you know like he's not gonna act that way when he leaves with katie so that was that was pretty cool and you're right i think this is a lot about the men when the other men you know get or sad that they leave that's a lot about them so yeah especially with this group of guys who like tries to vote somebody off the island every week yeah, <laughs> to see yeah. that yeah, wanna, really emotional yeah. over a guy leaving meant yeah. a lot yeah mm -hmm. agreed that's so funny well we we need to talk about a guy that People were not too loving towards this episode. So it's time to do our throwing shade portion where we're going to break down the shadiest moments of the night. So first things first, there was some shadiness going on with Hunter and the other guys. Some called him calculated, saying he's sneaky. Whose side were you guys on? I would imagine. So actually, I might be in the minority here. I don't know. I think, I don't know what Hunter's exactly done. Like, like you just said, Ash, it seems like... Every week they pick somebody out to like try and kick off the island and like band together and bully or whatever it is. And they picked Hunter this week and, and kind of a little bit last week. I don't really get it. Now, don't get me wrong. There was a moment when he told, you know, the drag queens that he wasn't into Katie. And then in front of Katie, he said he wasn't into her, which I get that sketchy. That's shady. Oh, That's yeah. shady. That's that shady. Was shady. That was that his was. one thing to me. Yes. But other than that, I'm like, I don't see why these guys hate this. I don't get it. I, I feel like every time they see somebody actually have – you know, a decent connection with Katie or Katie seems to be into, they get pissed. And so I think, I think Hunter was, you know, created to be a villain and, and he really wasn't same with, I kind of feel that way about Thomas, even a little bit. You know? I felt like that way about Thomas too. I yeah. thought it was very similar. It seems to me they're reaching this year for a villain a little bit. They didn't have one. They yep, certainly exactly. didn't have one. So like every time a guy said something mildly, Mm, I don't know. Um, they like took it and ran. Like he was, he was saying, I think like this is the top four. Like I'm a super fan. I know the show. This is top four. 
why is that a red flag? Oh my I did God. that every week, every I week. I had a burn book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you guys, I had a book where every week I'd be like, where I put a rose next to the girl's name. I'd cross her out. Yeah. I would like circle the front runner. Like I had a, I had a diary totally. of this. I agree completely. That's all. I mean, I agree completely. <laughs> Us guys used to sit around and talk who was going to be top four, probably at hometowns, you know, like that's not a weird thing to do. I don't know. And I thought Hunter handled it well. He was getting like destroyed up there and he just was kind of taking it. He didn't really fight back. He didn't get angry. He didn't lose his temper. So I, I don't know. I thought it was overblown, like you said. Yeah. I definitely think he took the high road in yeah. all of it, especially during the great debate thing that they had when people were roasting him. And then he took the time to confess his love to Katie, which I don't know if it was genuine or not. Right. But were you guys then surprised that he was sent home? And yeah. Yeah. I thought this was gonna be the first time the guys kind of ganged up on someone and she was gonna be like, no, like I feel it with him. I'm gonna keep him around. And she didn't. And I just don't see her reasoning behind it. Yeah, I mean, the one thing she did do, she sent him home, but then she also sent the three home that kind of ganged up on him. So yeah. I think it was kind of a just like, I'm yeah. getting rid of everybody involved in this drama. Like, I mean, she just, yeah. The, I mean, she put the ax down because what, four people left, I think, at that rose ceremony, so. Yeah. I mean, at least she got rid of everybody, not just Hunter, you know, so. Yeah, oh, that's true. But she was obviously feeling something towards him because she got visibly sick. Like she got, she that's threw up I... during that whole confrontation. So I was surprised. That was crazy. That was I, mean, crazy. I couldn't believe the throw up that we've been seeing teased throughout the season was over Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to be like the end. Yeah, like the very end. <laughs> Me too. Oh, oh, Bachelor in their editing. You got to love them. Got to <laughs> yes. love them. All right, guys, well, now it's time to play a round of Roses or Thorns. Rose or Thorn, the no self-care challenge at the opening of the episode. I One, two. Coming. Yeah. The thorniest thorn Thorn. ever. Oh. Thorniest thorn. Oh, I can't believe they did this. So bizarre. Why? Like, so bizarre. Why? There was Why is no point like to it. There was, like, there was no, like, veil of depth. <laughs> it no. was a bit, and it was not funny. And it was so weird. It was so weird. Like, I thought they were going to come back to it at some point. Like, some kind of storyline yeah. was going to come out of it. And it didn't. It was like, like, did anybody even last? Like, we have, did somebody win? Like, I don't know. Like, it was such a weird. And it was like 15 minutes of the episode. I was like, let's stop oh, talking about this. It, it was I bizarre. was cringing. I yeah. was like, why? I don't want to watch this. And it was obvious that Tasha and Caitlin, when Katie yeah. said to do this, they were like, oh. Yeah, they're like, I really? to watch Caitlyn deliver that message to the guy. I know. It was just bizarre. Only Caitlyn could do that, though. Like, oh only God. Caitlyn could do that. She was, like, laughing about it and having fun with it. I was, anybody else would have been so, so awkward and weirded out yes. by it, but she, yeah. she owned it. But, um, excuse me, uh, I thought it was interesting when Katie said, basically, like, are the guys talking to her about they masturbate? Because before, she's like, the reason I'm doing this is because I've heard that a lot yeah, of the guys are like taking long showers. That. I'm like, that why? So what? Weird. That was super weird. Like, and then like, I really, really didn't like when Blake sat down with her and was like, sometimes after work and then at night and then <laughs> over time on the weekends. I was like, this is, I'm like, I can't believe I'm watching this. Oh no, it's, it was, it was a very bizarre. I've never seen anything like that in the show. Like it was definitely different and weird. And, yeah. It was so gross. It was so yeah. gross. Okay. Well now we have to take like a hard turn because this is more nice, but Rose or Thorne, Jason making an appearance on a date. Rose, Rose for me. Rose for me for Rose. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I love the double date idea. Cause I think that's just so relaxing for like the person, the other, you know, uh, at the time it was Connor. I just thought that was a really cool date and, and I think Jason and Caitlin are really good judges of character and they seem to like Connor. Um, but yeah, I, I rose for sure for me. I know they liked Connor and then Connor was sent uh, home. Oh, so sad. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. And I, like it was, it was cool um, to see, like they were funny too, the way they were like creeping and like trying to watch to see if they kiss because Katie kept saying, I need to kiss him, I need to kiss him. So it was, it was a fun, fun moment. It was also fun watching them knowing that Jason was going to propose in a couple of weeks. I don't know I if you guys thought true. about that, but I'm like, I this is so that. cute. That's so true. I thought about that too. It's crazy that they weren't engaged then. Right. They, but like, talk about um, just like a relief to have two other people on a, on a date with you. Mm. Ugh, that like really takes the pressure off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. For sure. like they should do that more often. Like, I think they should have double dates with like alumni more often. That's Instead actually really of crazy. the yeah. wedding dates, have more double yes. dates. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. No Agreed. more wedding dates, please. <laughs> please, 
please. <laughs> okay, what about this one? Blake showing up at Katie's window with the boom box, giving us 80s feels. What did we think? One, two, three. Rose, Rose for me. Oh, see, I'm gonna give it a thorny rose. Really? Why? I like yes. that thorny rose. <laughs> because she just wanted to have a night by herself. <laughs> I don't know. I saw her in that sweatshirt and she like cancels the date with Connor. And if I were her, I'd be like, I can't wait to get room service and be alone. And then he That's shows true. up. I don't know that she really minded it. I mean, like she really does like Blake. I think he's a serious front runner right now. Mm -hmm. I'm actually calling Blake the winner in my mm -hmm. head right now. I am too. Um, I, agree. I don't I know. I like. I see. I totally get what you mean because you don't get a lot of alone time when you leave. <laughs> you know, like she probably was like, I'm gonna maybe have a glass of wine or just room, leave room service. Leave me alone. Yeah, yeah. But um, that move works 100 percent of the time. The old boombox above the head moves from John Cusack. But their chemistry is undeniable. Like you talk about, you go from like Connor and Justin, and then you see them making out in the hallway, and they can't keep their hands off each other. It's like, man, their chemistry is real and i think she was obviously excited to see him and i agree i think right now he's a huge front yeah. runner huge front runner yeah I but it. i agree with you like as far as the move with the boom box right it's very yeah. cute <laughs> and i think if there was going to be one person that she wanted to see there it was like between him or greg maybe okay. yeah i really and do think that like is overcoming greg's Right. Yeah, I completely agree right now, 100%. And like you, you, to break the fourth wall a little bit, like that's a bit, that shows a lot because that means the producers like okay. went to him and was like, okay, Katie's feeling down. She just dumped somebody. Do you want to go cheer her up? And he's like, hell yeah. So like that's that. a big move. Like, okay, because yeah. I was going to ask that because I don't know if you guys caught that, but he was like, it was really hard for me to do this. And so I was, mm -hmm. I don't know if he went to producers or you guys think then he, producers went to him. Either or, no, either or, but either either way, it's huge because the producers let him. You know what I mean? Right. So like that, that was a big moment. That show tells a lot about what Katie, how Katie feels about Blake. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, well, besides Blake looking into hometowns, like who is going to get this? Who do you think deserves the rose? Like who's the big rose? It might be Blake, but what do you guys think? Um, my top four right now is Blake, Greg, Andrew, and Michael A. That's mine too. And I think that's, I think for sure that's hometowns. Cause what, who else is Justin and the other guy, Brandon? Who is I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea who that, that is. That was the weirdest part of the whole, okay, besides the self pleasuring part, that was the weirdest part seeing him get called at the rose ceremony. Who I call that? him Iceman because he looks like, um, he looks like, what's his name in Top Gun with his hair. Oh, uh, with his like, hair. Yeah. yeah. Got him her. I'm like, okay, this guy's like so flying under the radar. We've ne we've seen them interact once. Yeah. And, and he's top I can't six. He's with the other guys. Top six. It's crazy. Yeah, I had no idea who that is, but I think he gets a date next week, maybe from the previews. So maybe we'll get to know him some more. But I think the top four are locked in. I think it's totally locked in. Well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see though to see more about this man because I can't even remember his name right now. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. All right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us on this week's Bachelor Tea Party. We will see you next week. Bye, guys. All right. Thank you. Bye.